close your eyes and watch your breath. Although you don't watch it, you feel it. But watch it in the sense of paying careful attention. When the breath comes in, at what point does it start feeling too long? Or if you start breathing out, does it feel too short? Try to be observant of what's going on. This is the important part of meditation, is being observant, watching what you're doing and seeing the results. And you ask yourself, what kind of results are you hoping for? You're hoping for a sense of well-being inside. First by making the breath comfortable. And then there's also a sense of well-being where the mind knows that it has some skill for dealing with whatever comes up. If there's a pain in the body, you've been meditating enough to know that there are ways you can deal with the pain that you don't have to suffer from it. So bring those to bear. Focus on the parts of the body you can make comfortable. And then once they're comfortable, you see if you can spread that comfort to areas that are not quite so comfortable. In other words, you maximize the good potentials inside. We go through life with so many potentials, both inside and outside, that we don't really take advantage of. Or sometimes we land on some bad potentials. For example, there's potential for pain here. There's a potential for boredom while you're meditating. And if you focus on them, you can turn them into a real problem. But then there are good potentials inside. The Buddha said there's a potential for rapture, there's a potential for ease. There's a potential for energy inside. How do you find those potentials? How do you make the most of them? Those are the questions of the meditation. So you're not simply accepting what's there. You're accepting the fact that there are potentials there, things that can be done, things that can be maximized. This way you find you have a source of happiness that's independent of things outside. A lot of people have to find their happiness in material gain, status, praise from other people, sensual pleasures. But those ways of looking for happiness cause a lot of division. Well, too often when you gain something, somebody else has to lose. It's because so many people are here on earth only for material gain. That's why there's so much divisiveness. That's all they can say, who has the most, who has the most things. And if somebody else has more than you have, then you try to take theirs away. And of course, there's going to be conflict. But the Buddha found that you can find happiness from the potentials you already have inside yourself. And John Lee's example is of a field that you have. You've got a field that you haven't really developed yet. It's still just weeds, an overgrown brush. And yet you go in laying claim to other people's land. The right thing is to turn around and look at the land you've got. The soil has a potential. There's water, there's soil. Everything you need for, for your food is right there. All you have to do is give it some work. And then you benefit from it. And that way each of us can find happiness in a way that doesn't cause any trouble to anyone else. And that's how we can live together in the world in peace. Each of us cultivating our own property. In the case of the body, our properties of earth, water, wind, fire. In the case of the mind, the properties for but the potential for ease, the potential for rapture, and even bigger potentials inside. So the potential for happiness is here inside. The more you understand that, the more peace there will be in your own mind, and you're a force for peace in the world. Instead of trying to straighten other people out, straighten yourself out. Make use of these potentials. And you find that the happiness they provide is much greater than anything you can get from outside.